It's me, Vera, here to remind you that this is an adult podcast. That means we're going to deal with tough topics. Take a break if you need it, and be kind to yourself, because we sure won't be. everybody, and welcome back to Stitch of Fate, a Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition podcast. As always, I am your storyteller, Mike Martin, joined by my four wonderful players, Chelsea, Bub, Mark, and Josh. And welcome, all four of you, to Season 2. Here we, we are. Made yeah. We made it. We made it. Yeah. And yeah, all four of your characters are alive. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, <laughs> which is a start, or at least, you know, for the time being. <laughs> for, <right>? yeah. <laughs> for, yeah, for worse or better, we are technically alive (laughs) alive i know people have been waiting for the start of season two for a while uh i have been milling about this uh, season two since the end of season one so i'm really excited to just leap into this Mm. um i don't unless you all have something you want to say or pitch hey thank you support on patreon all that stuff i'm gonna gonna put that to dot's hands because she's better at that than i am so (laughs) i'm better at saying going (laughs) yeah chill chill for me dot (laughs) chill uh Thank you, Patreon, for getting us here, because you did technically get us here because we met our first goal, which means um, that's kind of huge. Season two happened because of your awesomeness and your love for what we do. So thanks. Uh, We're excited, actually. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and announce it now, because if I do it now, past dot has to keep future dot accountable. So see what happens uh, (laughs) when you start recording. Um, I we are going to have a new goal on patreon that is going to offer four more character one shots and we're hoping to maybe have some guests on board and some really cool stuff so we can't promise anything but if you help us get to it uh which should be coming up we'll make an announcement about it uh we have more content for you uh so yeah uh we're here because you love us and we love you And if you can't support us on Patreon, dropping us a review wherever you're listening to us goes a huge long way. So just drop us a tell a friend. Tell a friend. We want your ears. Vera wants your eyes. But we (laughs) as the podcast want your ears. Right. Uh, All right. Well, with that then, let's rein it in, set the scene, and see what our coterie is up to. As the screen fades in from black, Instead of hearing the background noise of sirens and honking horns and uh, buzzing motorcycles and the chatter of those on the city streets of New York, we're greeted to a gentle rhythmic dripping sound mixed with a trickling of a small stream of water. Soon that darkness gives way to a gentle low light surrounded by concrete on both sides. The little water stream that we see is actually a trickling of water deep within the New York sewer system. We can see a rat scurrying through the water, carrying a hot, large piece of what looks to be a pizza crust, bringing it into its nest as the camera follows it intensely. And as the, as the rat disappears into its nest and the camera rises to more uh, human uh, eye level and turns, we can actually see scurrying down with his coat held tightly, looking over his shoulder every couple of times, a familiar young thin blood's face, that of Sean. Sean, you were told to meet here. This is the night that you're all taking care of those Tommy the Mouse people. At least that's what Vera told you. Something about the deal going wrong and Tommy the Mouse crossing the line with the Russians. Whatever it is, whatever the problem, it threatens your drug flow and therefore threatens Vera's cash flow and needs to be taken care of. But it seems that you're the first one here. We hear the occasional car rolling overhead, muffled by the concrete and asphalt above you. And you're next greeted as you stand around for a few minutes by the quiet, um, subtle walk of Duke. Duke, you actually see Sean as you turn uh, a corner coming out from a narrow hall, or a narrow tunnel uh, in these maze-like tunnels of the sewers of New York. And he's just sitting there looking around and he catches your eyes as you walk out from around. Seems Sean is the first one here. Sean. You ready? I suppose as I'll ever be. Cool. Well, it'll be an exciting ending, so we've got that to look forward to, at least. Are you and I the first, then? Yeah, I haven't seen the others. Not that we know where Max is. Great. It's like a buddy cop film. 
Yeah. Uh, Eustarsky or Hutch? Not the direction I was going for it, but something along the lines of Buckeye Bonzeru, and we can continue moving forward. I'm sure you don't understand that reference. Nah. There's this really good show called Hannibal, though. Tell me more. <laughs> Whether Max is actually there listening in or not um, is entirely up to our dear player. Does Max actually make pre isn't his presence known at this point? He is, as uh, all this talk of uh, coming together as a team uh, is mentioned, uh, both Duke and Sean hear from a patch of open air, Drac Pack Assemble. <laughs> as he ripples into existence as he speaks out loud, that last bit of silence is actually broken by this, the deafening sounds of high heels hitting concrete and, and uh, small puddles as Vera turns the corner. Vera, you know the details here. Tommy the Mouse, of course, was a problem. The last time you dealt with him, he was not particularly polite and rather rude to all of those involved in the business that you were there to perform that night. But in order to get back at you, as he so thoroughly promised before he left, he didn't end up hitting you personally like most would. Instead, he went after the Russian that got the deal that he wanted. Seems like he figured out where the Russian was keeping all those drugs that he bought from you on a price and went out and took out a few of the gang members and stole that stuff for himself. After a few days of looking, you ended up finding out that the warehouse over by the, uh, uh, over by the north side is where he's been keeping it. Now, Tommy the Mouse is no big power player. He's only got maybe three warehouses total. And so finding out where one of them was wasn't all that hard with the right, uh, let's say the right payoffs and the right connections. And here, under this sewer, about four or five blocks south of where this ware warehouse is, is where you all agreed to meet. How you're going to tackle it, and what exactly you're going to do. In about an hour's time, there will be about a, a change in the guard. Uh, those who have been standing guard during the day will be swapping those with the night crew. What you end up wanting to do during that time is up to you, but that's when the other three also see Vera as she's running through this in her head, reminding herself of what the actual issue is and what needs to be taken care of. Vera, you see the three of them standing there waiting for Vera, who's never late. She's always on time. And these Russians call for Tommy's death? They just said to make it right. Oh. I love Russians. Okay. Yeah, Vera comes stalking up in pants. Well, she's not in a dress. Uh, you don't actually know what she has because she has a giant trench coat on because we're in the sewers, yes. Um, there is an appropriate dress for every place. Um, and she wears a mask, uh, like, over her face as she walks up. Does anybody say anything, or do they just allow Vera to approach? Hey, Vera, what's the rumpus? His name is Tommy, and he's stuck in mine. Okay, looks like Tommy the Mouse finally pays the piper. How you want to do this? There's a change of guard in an hour. They'll attack when they least expect it. Sean, did you bring a weapon? Uh, I got the piece from earlier. <sighs> yeah. Great. Uh, I, she assumes by piece you mean the gun in your pants. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah, there's a large bulge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the gun. Uh, and uh, <laughs> there goes, I... Do we know how many men Matt has? There, um, oh, you know what? Let's have you make a roll for me, please. Can I please get an intelligent streetwise roll for your, we'll say your reconnaissance over the past couple of days? You're going to have to tell me what your rolls are because do I Do I have to do that? You could have any one of the Okay, the good. Vera, that would be a bad roll for Vera. Um, Two for Max and three for Sean would give you a rough estimate of anywhere between five and eight. You're not entirely sure exactly how many. Two on the front, two in the back, and an unknown one to three on the inside. The warehouse isn't huge. It's more of like a storage uh, unit than anything. Well, uh, how's about I just go take a look-see, and then we'll know exactly what we're dealing with. That sounds about right. Max, this is an area of expertise for you. No complaints from me. All right. We'll see you in a sec. All right, you're gonna Max. do you need to use any, any abilities that require a rouse check? Uh, let's see. I believe I'll need to rouse to uh, obfuscate, yes? I believe so. For unseen passage. These are my rouse. 
one success. Okay, so you do not get any hungrier, and you uh, ripple. As as he says that, he you watch as Max kind of just vanishes from your sight. Max is going to make his way upstairs, and I imagine then you're going to wait an hour, watch it, stake it out, see how many guards come and go, and try to, and just count what you end up seeing. And so Max makes his way up to the top. Max, I would just need a simple wits awareness from you. Um, or no, uh, a wits investigation roll from you as you are uh, watching this. Unless wits awareness is better for you. I would accept either one. Uh, I believe wits awareness is going to be... I don't think I have anything to investigate. So, okay. Yeah, it'll be wits awareness. I'll take a wits awareness. Two successes. As Max makes his way upstairs and pushes away the manhole cover, greeting himself with a louder, bustling New York City street, still... Uh, even though you're not anywhere near the uh, center of the city, plenty of people are still milling about on the sidewalks as you navigate around them, them unable to perceive your presence, hear your footsteps, or uh, even um, they kind of just navigate around you if they end up walking towards you. And as you hop a fence and crawl away from the sidewalk and sit up on a stack of three abandoned cars that are nearby the warehouse and kind of just plop yourself up there and watch, we see as the Moon passes a little bit in the sky, time fast forward a bit, and a couple of beat down Hondas end up pulling their way through the double wide gate. A few of the guards step forward, one of them pulls a, a pistol and kind of makes their way over and you see them quickly knock on the window. There's a quick exchange of conversation before they make a waving past and you watch the two cars wheel around back as both those front guards follow around, uh, leaving your sight and leaving the front door completely unguarded. Now you can go follow them around, Max, or you can um, you can uh, just keep watch, or you can try and enter the, the the door right this minute. What would Max do at this moment? Would he just wait to see what guards take place? Uh, I think he's on a reconnaissance mission, so yeah, he's going to mostly Playing it safe. He's good, yeah. So Max pops off the three cars, and we see him make his way uh, over to the corner of the warehouse to just follow the cars and see what happens. And you watch as both cars, both uh, there, you see the brake lights light up in a. Uh, this kind of bright red light greets your face as they stop and the passenger side rear doors from both of them fly open and you watch one, two, three, four, five, six guards total, three from each car uh, step out. There's a few, again, another exchange of uh, words. You see the two guards that were at the front pop in uh, to the, one of the cars as those six guards end up spreading out and heading towards the back and the front. After maybe 10 minutes, uh, you see the rest of the guards from the inside come out and the guards in the back end exchange and uh, they all enter the cars as the doors shut the brake lights give way and those two cars file out as uh, the new guards take their position you counted a total of six you were too far away to tell if any of them was tommy the mouse or if tommy the mouse is even in the warehouse you were told he was going to be here tonight so you expect that he will be with that Max pops back out the street side, pulls away the manhole covered, and with a quick slide down and a plop into the water, uh, makes himself known as he approaches the group not too far away. Okay, looks like we got about a half a dozen of these mooks. I gotta say, I love mob guys. No matter what terrible thing you do to them, you just don't feel bad about it. I would agree. We should still assure we don't break any rules. We at least need to leave nothing behind. Well, the idea is we're still in everything, so that's not a problem. It's true. And what is it you propose that we do here with our friend, Sean, our young Herbie, with his peacemaker in his pants? Do you think that he's going to excel up there? Well, the idea is they won't see me, right? Is that the case? I hope not. You're making a face, Vera. What is our lighting situation like up there, Maxwell? Uh, I'll describe what we're looking at. To... Okay. Yep, as you had, uh, as you were thinking about upstairs, there's a couple of street lights on the street that you'll mostly avoid. But in the parking area, there's just one big spotlight over in the corner of the fence where it meets that is being run by a separate generator uh, that kind of just puts a big light on the front uh, of the warehouse. Around back, you didn't see... Any uh, any lights, but um, any big lights for that matter. Maybe a little low light, but that's the only major light source in that area. Is it easier for you to take them out in a group, Max, or should we separate them and cause a little ruckus? Mm, probably uh, surreptitious-wise, it'd be easier to take them out one by one. You know, just break their neck or whatnot. 
put my fist all the way through their face and out the back of their head. You know, the usual. Oftentimes, when they rally together, there will be a brilliant salvo, and I'd rather that be a bit quieter, if at all possible. Duke, do you think you could convince one of these guards to tell us where Tommy is? As much as I'd love to burn this place down, Tommy is all I care about. And Max can handle anything in the way of us and that information. That shouldn't be a problem. With any luck, Max was able to short out any sort of recording devices. So as long as I can sequester one to a private enough area, some alone time, and I can convince him to say much of anything I wish. We watch as Vera for a moment looks him up and down, hands on her hips, maybe even tapping her foot gently as she thinks about this idea before she comes to a conclusion. All right. We'll get information, and then Max can put some extra holes through their head. Sean. What do you need? I'd like for you to find the missing drugs. <laughs> well, you know what they say, I got the nose for it. Please wait until we return to safer quarters. Until then, find them. I want them. I'd like to yeah. assure Tommy doesn't keep them, neither do his associates, and they return where they belong. Yeah, you just uh, behave yourself there, Toucan Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it's probably it's not good, is it? What well, Fruit Loops? He was on Fruit cereal bad, boxes. You were a child once. You can't remember the toucan. With sometimes things go underappreciated, even in our kindred life. I'm sorry, Max. I this was lost upon me as well. We don't yeah. have that in England. Sorry. Ah, uh, uh, right, right. Okay. Ugh. Max sort of cracks his knuckles and then cracks his own neck. Ugh. All right, let's get this show on the road, shall we? As the track pack separates down in the sewers, the camera actually ends up following Max as he uh, clambers his way back up through the manhole. We hear the sliding of the, of the grate against the asphalt as he pulls himself up effortlessly. He simply, in, are you going back invisible? Yeah, can I, can can I get a round to check uh, for close. going back invisible? Success. No hunger increase. And as Max pulls himself up from the manhole, he goes... Uh, uh, invisible from uh, that point on, um, walking his way past the double wide gate again. Two guards stand by the front door and what would be the uh, the large garage door that would allow a truck to back in if needed. Um, how would Max like to approach both of these guards? They're about ten feet away from one another, um, both facing forward, but they be they're they're both kind of having light like con casual conversation with one another. Now, have I noticed any pattern, like when uh, one of them goes to take a leak or something like that? I've been no, no, no pattern, so to speak. It seems pretty lackadaisical. Um, there's no patrol either. There seems to just be two in the front and two in the back, and however many inside. Um, if you want to wait, you could try and wait them out, see if they need to take a piss or not, um, or you can act or anything else that you're thinking of. Yeah, well, I think we're we're trying to maintain a little bit of cover here, so. Rather than just smashing their heads together, we need at least one alive. So Max is going to wait for an opportunity, maybe when one of them is distracted, go you know, or goes to take a leak or whatnot, and then the other one is going to get nabbed. Okay. You wait about 15, 20 minutes, somewhere around there, before the conversation eventually kind of starts dying down. And in order to avoid the awkward silence between the two of them, as you've been listening to their conversation, it's very clear they don't know each other very well. Probably just two soldiers within the mob that uh, are just low-level grunts doing their job. Uh, and as the conversation dies down, the one, uh, one of the two of them just uh, asks the other one to head inside and maybe grab them both a drink. Uh, he's getting a little thirsty. He's getting a little parched. He agrees to it after a little uh, bickering and back and forth. And the door opens and swings shut. It's at that point, Max has an opportunity as you watch this guy kind of just lean up against the wall, reach into a front pocket and pull a cigarette out as he plops it between his lips and he... Uh, goes for a lighter in his jeans pocket. Uh, well, Max uh, uses this opportunity to utter his tried and true catchphrase, come here, you prick. And uh, so it grabs him from behind, obviously using potence as well to overcome any opposition. And I get a uh, strength brawl against a difficulty of one as you catch this guy completely unaware. Strength brawl, and I can add potence into this as well? Yeah, yes, you can. You're not trying to kill him, though, right? You're trying to keep him alive, so. Yes. 
Yeah. Right. This is not to do damage with my lethal body, whatnot. This is yep. to yeah, subdue him completely. Correct. Cool. With five successes, it's very simple. As you as you just walk up behind him, he doesn't hear you coming. He cannot perceive you. And just as he brings the lighter up and he, he flicks it a couple of times and the flame hits, we hear Max's voice break the silence as he <laughs> ripples into existence behind him. Come here, you prick. And as the, his hand covers his mouth and around his throat and he lifts him up, his toe is dangling. He doesn't fight too long before he ends up falling unconscious. And you lift him up by the legs and carry him fireman style out and away. Uh, I assume back into the sewers is where you're looking to just bring him. Mm -hmm. No, actually, Max doesn't necessarily, because he's got unseen passage, he doesn't necessarily even uncloak when he moves. So it, it might, to an observer, this guy sort of just goes, and then sort of Going awkwardly down. shuffles over. Yeah. And as you carry him back out the double wide gate, uh, Duke waiting at the end of the bottom of the manhole, you, it took like maybe 20 minutes, Duke, before he ended up returning. Um, if you were keeping, I imagine Duke keeps rather close time, 19 minutes, 47 seconds before you actually see, uh, or he uh, lands next to you and uh, the body's kind of just there. Take it easy, pal. I just want to introduce you to a friend of mine. Uh, and sort of still covering his mouth, sort of turn him to face Duke. Yep, and as, as he's turning his face, he's kind of drearily opening his eyes back up after having been choked out briefly. And as he opens his eyes, he's met with the, the cold, stoic gaze of Duke Premond. Duke, what is it you do when you see his gaze? Does he issue sort of uh, any, any, like, either benign or eccentric facial expression? Not immediately. He's more coming to, and he's um, kind of a little surprised and confusion. I I'm gonna compel him to relax. Okay. You simply say the words relax and that panic before it even get out of the way dissipates. Like water rolling off the back of a duck. It's good to have you here, friend. I appreciate the time that you're going to offer us. How are things going this evening? He nods with the mouth, the hand over his mouth. As Duke begins to speak, Max, and you realize you can actually feel him physically go from tense to weigh loose, and we watch as uh, Max peels away his hand very uh, liberally. My night just getting started. I, I didn't think I'd be down here. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. What are you guys doing over here? You know? Uh it's okay. We're all friends here. Uh, so bit, Max, bit having surprise. Max having seen this before, he knows Duke's got this under control. He's not even holding the guy anymore. He just sort of lights up a cigarette and standing it, there. Is it, is, as you pulled your hand away, did you pluck the cigarette that he had from his lips? Yes, and I think so. Yeah. He watches Max puts it in his mouth, and he's like, hey, "Welcome, buddy," and lights it up, taking the lighter from his other hand as this guy just kind of loosely lets it go. It's a bit, of a, a bit of a surprise. I understand you weren't expecting this, but this is the only way that this could unfold before your eyes and before ours. I'm sure that you are familiar with that proper television show, Undercover Boss, yes? He actually gives you a slight grin. I fucking love that show. Watch it with my wife all the time. This is something like that, except we've been hired by Thomas's employers to make sure that not only is he doing his job, but to see if there are any weak links in the chain of command, at least here on property. Now, uh, uh, elaborate, uh, get, remind me the um, restrictions of compel at this point. Is it, was relax? Compel the, was just to relax. This is just I, conversation. Can I get manipulation subterfuge? Of you. course. Of course. Manipulation subterfuge. It's not terrible. Five. Uh, he he does for a moment kind of look a little confused. He's like, ah, that's weird. I don't remember being told about that. We, uh, I was getting this is paid. actually how this works. If you knew, then you would have an opportunity to plan your response and alert your uh, acquaintances and or coworkers. So what, what, are you, what are you doing here then? What are you supposed to do? Well, we're attempting to discover whether or not Thomas might be working outside of command and how your co-workers are additionally performing under the influence of Thomas as well. Listen, I ain't, I ain't trying to get involved in shit that ain't going to benefit me in the long run. I'm a lowly man. If you're just here to check on things, Tommy's here tonight. I'm getting paid extra because guard duty while Tommy's here. So that's if great news. If expected or, or, or known, then he's inside. Well, we have managed to scour the surroundings, and we have an understanding of what this place can look like. Uh, I'm assuming that equally all of the other guards are 
are armed, such as yourself. Yeah, before we take you in, of course, we're going to have to pat you down, make sure you ain't armed. I'll bring you up with Tommy. We'll make sure everything's hunky-dory, squared away, and then we'll escort you out and send you home. And that we were expected to find eight guards tonight. Eight guards? I am don't think, oh, uh, well, there's eight total. Total. Eight total. So four outside, four internal then. This meets our numbers. That's that's fine. That's to be expected. Yeah, yeah. Then you know uh, Capo's going to be here tonight, right? This is information to us. That's actually good to know. And is he expecting an entourage as well? He has a meeting with Tommy, so I don't, I don't know what, what. No, I'm not privy to the details. I figured that if you, if a cop was here, he probably knows that you guys are coming. No. Is he well, have the same reason? He is meeting with Tommy, so I'm. And when is that meeting to take place? Oh, we weren't actually right. privy to that information. Oh, it's happening right now. Very good. Very good. And what was your name again? Ah, oh, yeah, you can call me Johnny. Johnny. Johnny, thank you, Johnny. I appreciate that. Is uh, is he reaches is Max forward still here? I, I imagine Max is behind him. Yeah, Max is standing behind him. Yeah, and he's got the lit, lit cigarette in his mouth, and he actually the the guy actually reaches forward and pats you on the shoulder, like gives you a hard pat. He's like, "Hey, just uh, put in a good word for me, right?" Wanna? Is there up? anything else uh that you think we might need, Max? Mm, I don't know. I think uh, oh. I think Johnny's uh, helped us all he can. Well, Johnny. I appreciate your candid service and information. You have been perfect. Perfect for this experience. How do you see this night ending for you, Jonathan? I hope I get my payday, and I hope you send up a good word up the ladder to the family. Do you have any family, Jonathan? I got a wife, like I said. Love her very much. How long have you been married? I don't, I don't like these questions. Usually simple these question, questions. simple yeah. question, simple answer. Listen, I ain't been in this game long, but it's been a few years, and these questions are usually leads to threats. Did I do something wrong? Do I need to be making amends? Should I be paying my tithes to somebody? I am going to forgetful mind. Okay, right. Right. forgetful mind. Yeah. So you forget to mind him. Your hunger does go up to a two. You, as you, uh, as your blood thickens and you can feel it coursing through your veins, you kind of like, your tongue claps against the top of your mouth a couple times, and you can almost feel the urge to. While feeding isn't necessary right now, it certainly would be satisfying. And him in front of you is free food, but not now is not the time to focus on that. What is it that you say to him? I explain to him that he heard something funny. Uh, in the, the sewer grate, he wanted to investigate, he even noticed that the uh, manhole was tilted upward. It looked like something had been done by human hands. And, well, he couldn't be a good guard unless he investigated that himself. How could he be doing his job otherwise? As I'm saying this, I will disarm him, and then I will issue a command of him to walk, and I point in a direction away from this facility until morning. And as you begin to explain how his night went. You watch as his more eager look goes slack. His mouth goes open a little bit, almost dumbfounded, and he clearly takes in all the words you say. You reach forward and pluck the pistol from his hands. His fingers and arms give no resistance. And after all is said and done, and you're certain he has accepted this new reality, you point behind him and say, walk until morning. That's where the noise came from. And he turns and he starts plodding that way at a regular walking pace. Takes about minute or two before he turns a corner because it comes to a dead end and you lose sight of him leaving vera and, jo and sean can see this but at work a distance away but they could hear it it's easy to hear yeah uh, so we heard it. that tommy's inside yeah. in this meeting you all would have heard everything uh, unless we're upstairs this person he's meeting with what do we know about them you didn't get a name you just know a capo is a captain and is a higher ranking than tommy you don't know which capo it is well, it's not with the Russians. No, 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 no. I imagine he's with the wrong. Italians. Yeah, he's, he's with he's, his own. He's like, he's like Tommy's boss. Him. Yeah, he's probably, that's, that's the gist. Is it, if he's not his boss, he's higher ranking than Tommy. You know that. Tommy's a low, lower ranking uh, position of power. Okay. Vera goes, oh, this just got really fun. How many inside? Four? Sorry, Plus? it's underboss, not a capo. Four outside, four inside. Plus, uh, however many guys this underboss is bringing with them, right? 
These eight guys, they're just Tommies. Can I roll to determine what that might be like with my information? Uh, if he's going to his boss's place of work, what are the odds of him bringing a major boss entourage himself? Boss coming to Tommy's place of work. The underboss is coming to Tommy's warehouse. Right. Um, but yeah, uh, that would be an intelligent streetwise check. Do you have a specialty that would help with that? Mm, uh, criminology, potentially, or maybe just uh, government FBI? Mm, I would accept either one of those as a plus one. Okay. I would take either one of those. So one. you said streetwise intelligence? Yes. Can uh, Max make that roll too? Mm -hmm. Anybody anybody can make that roll when they learn of the... Oh, that was just not a good roll for you. No, that was bad. I'm going to I'm gonna re-roll that. Use a willpower. We roll. I had two successes. Two successes for Duke. We'll see what Max gets. Three, three for Sean, two for Max. Two for Max, three for Sean, and two for Duke. Does Vera roll or no? Yeah. <laughs> No, this is why I keep them around. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, Duke and Max know that he'd like, he probably have his own personal guard. Sean has actually seen offhand a couple times in his passings what has been pointed out to him as an underboss or someone of importance. And he's always seen them with around two, like two on each side at the, at the very least. So you imagine there's probably an extra two in there, Sean. Yeah, this guy's going to be flanked by uh, brutes, whatever. They're not going to be a problem. Listen, if uh, our entire objective tonight is to uh, eliminate Tommy, is that what we're we're up to? Yeah, was, but yes. Okay, and here's my pitch. I can sneak in there, hang by Tommy, wait until their meeting is over, and then I just kill him when he's alone. I mean... Yeah, but don't you want to make friends with the underboss? I do. Okay. I should, uh, should go without saying that the guard that was likely accompanying our dear Jonathan that has now walked away will likely report in that Jonathan is missing. Oh, well, we'll go get him and then go inside. Say we got patted down. I like this idea. We should do more Tommy. Do more to Tommy than simply kill him. We owe him for causing this entire mess. We still need the drugs. Maybe a ride out of here? And I look at Sean like, I know you can hotwire a damn car. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like it. I even thought about maybe delivering Tommy to the Russians. Letting them have their fun, but... So... What is the plan that we want to go with? Is Max going to go in solo? Is uh, Are you all going to go get Johnny and bring back and get it padded down while Max goes invisible? What do we want to do? I propose that we go take out the remaining guard out front before he reports back. Good call. Walk inside and make friends with the boss. <laughs> this was kind of my idea as well. Oh, yeah. I like your bold plan, Max. I also like yours. Stay near Tommy. Don't let him know you're there. In case things go south, I still want his fucking head. Duke. One of the things we've been lacking at the... The space is some extra security. Maybe we just take Tommy's. I suppose if we we're offering competitive wages, it wouldn't be hard to remove them from the premise non-violently. Can we swing this? Within reason. It might dip into some of Sean's lunch money, though. Aww. Sean doesn't even eat lunch. Right. It was mostly a, about drugs, oh. but yes. Oh, right. Max, take out the guards. We don't want them to know we're coming. I'll come in through the back entrance. We need a ride. We need the drugs. And if all goes well, maybe we can walk away with everything that Tommy owns. After you, milady. Uh, so, uh, just to, to clarify, you want the guard at the front, the one remaining guard, Max? To yeah, take we just him don't up? want him to report that nobody that this other guard's disappeared. Basically. Okay, Max uh, is going to obfuscate again. Perfect. Okay. Give me a roll. So, without wasting any time, oh, I, I get a little like, hungrier. You get a little hungrier. You got two or three. Uh, I am now at, uh, I, would I have started at a zero or you a one? You would have started at one. Yeah, so I'm, I'm at two now. 
Okay, that's fine. As as you feel your uh, body uh, fade from uh, consciousness of those around you, completely forgetting that you're there and you make your way up the manhole cover, you can actually feel that itch in the back of your throat and the beast inside um, just nudging a little bit to sate its hunger. As the uh, moon greets your skin, and, well, only to yourself you can see that, but as the moon greets your skin and you climb out onto the city street, you actually see the other guard shouting halfway through. He's got a flashlight as he's walked past the spotlight uh, looking over by where the cars were stacked and some other garbages. And he's like, Johnny, Johnny. I'm going to go up behind him, do the same thing, nab him, sleep. Strength for all me. Strength for all. And add in potence. Sure. Feel free. Oh, only one oh. success. Dang. Do you want to use a willpower and reroll yeah. three? I'm going to, I'm going to use a real power. Yeah. Uh, that's a die pool of 10 in your roll. That's rough. You gain two successes, so a total of three to get behind him with a defense of one. Well, you're actually able to get behind him, and you lock him into a, a grapple, lifting him under his neck. He's actually able to fight back enough where he doesn't go unconscious in one round. So now we're going to go into the next round where we, he actually gets a full uh, attempt at breaking th a free. So it's going to be opposed strength brawl checks. I don't think he'll do very well, but he at least gets a chance. Two. I when my three dice pool, I rolled two successes. So, but it's still as, as, as again, as, as he's uh, trying to pull, pull you off and you're still able to hold him there, this guy is fighting him. He's actually wiggling, trying to throw an elbow into you. He's able to actually lunge himself forward enough to get his tippy toes on the, on the ground so he's not getting himself choked out. You did damage. He's still up, though, and he's still trying to fight. So one more strength brawl. So on that last one, about nine seconds of time as this guy's struggling, you know, midair and, and trying desperately to kind of break his way out. Well, it's frustrating, Max. You're not trying to like kill him right out the gate. And eventually his whole body does go limp as he falls unconscious in your arms, finally. Now, you can, where do you want to do with his body? You could bring it back and put it in the sewers. There's the, car, the, the, the three stacked garbage cars you could put him behind. Uh, what are you looking to do with it? Uh, I'm going to drag him back to the sewer just so I can also update people on the situation and remove his, disarm him, take his gun. Yep, you disarm him, and that's another body down. Vera, Duke, and Sean all waiting around, <sighs> waiting for him to return. And this was much quicker. This was under a minute as he climbed out and was able to climb back down with, uh, with the body. Good. We're down two. We have two outside, four inside. I'm going to go in through the roof. You are? I pat There's Sean a on the shoulder. It's okay. As Vera then uh, swings her legs and arms onto the ladder and scurries her way up, do, 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 and staying in the shadows, like a snake up the uh, like a snake up the ladder, she quickly finds her way up there. Does anybody follow after that? Or does everybody stay down here? Uh, just to clarify, did we want to, did Vera want Max to take out the other two guards at the back first before coming in? Uh, yeah, before she goes, Vera just simply says, "At least leave some of them alive. Maybe we can employ them." Yeah, I ain't killed nobody yet tonight. Well, with the guards in the back, um, unless you plan on waiting for another opportune time, which could be 20, 30 minutes, you ah. know how long the meeting's going to go, they're going to be next to each other. So um, it won't be as easy to pick off the, the other two in the back. Without so how do you go about that? Or trying to take them out simultaneously. Okay. Yeah. Do, uh, well, I've got, the, I've got uh, these gentlemen with me. Uh, do you want to take well, I can take one. Do you want to take the other? This shouldn't be a problem. Fair enough. I imagine, just to set the scene for a moment, as these plans are coming forward and uh, Max kind of looks around and is like, well, we've got these gentlemen, we can take care of them. And Duke immediately steps forward and Vera's ready to climb on the roof. The camera listens and can hear the planning, but does shift its focus to Sean's face for a moment. Sean, do you, does show, how does Sean feel and, and ha, have felt this, uh, this night so far? What, 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 what kind of expression do we see on Sean's face? I know it's kind of a spotlight, but I'm curious what Sean's feeling in this moment. I think he is feeling comfortable and confident. Okay. So he's actually looking pretty good right now, happy yeah. as a Duke steps forward. Um, Duke and, and Max are going to make their way up through the manhole as Vera climbs her way to the roof. What is Sean going to do? You're going to head inside oh, through the open door now that there's no guards at the front and see if you can find the drugs? Yep. Okay. He's going to step inside, hey, use so let's his do uh, uh, streetwise powers to uh, <laughs> First, sniff out drugs, and then so disappear At this inside. point, the entire drag pack then springs into action, each climbing up the ladder one at a time. Vera, can I get a dex stealth followed by a dex athletics check with the parkour specialty as you make your way to the roof? 
Max uh, is an already invisible and making his way around, but a deck stealth from Duke as he also is going to try and flank the other side at the same time. And then Sean, as you're making way to the front door and you actually, uh, realizing obviously there are no guards here, you can actually see the two fresh beers completely unopened that he placed up against the wall, uh, the drinks that Max heard him going to grab as you make your way to the front door. And I will need a dex larceny check from you, Sean, as the door is locked. Oh, okay. The camera slides up the ladder first, beating all the coterie out there as it watches one at a time as Vera quickly scampers her way out and it watches as a uh, foot level as she runs over to the warehouse, heading over to the fence, quickly scaling a nearby chain link fence and kicking off from that, landing on a, her hands and tumbling, doing a quick somersault roll, using that momentum and energy to disperse it without creating much sound. We truly don't hear any noise as we watch her scamper out. Max was close behind, but the camera never caught him. We can't see him, but it's Duke who follows next. He's not particularly loud. He's, it's not that he's easy to, to take care of. Uh, it's not that he's easy to hear. But in this particular part of town where there's not a lot of people walking around, Duke splashing into a couple of puddles here and there is enough to draw the attention of a nearby guard. We'll get to that in a minute, as Sean is the last one who climbs out. We see him run up over and knock over one of the beer bottles and shove it to the side as he- Oh, he grabs it. <laughs> grabs it. Does he pop the top of, uh, of the uh, oh, thing yeah, off? Oh yeah, he drinks it. It's a, bud, it's a Bud Light as you pop the yeah. top off and take a swig of the Bud Light. I'm not sure how Sean feels about Bud Light. I don't think he's particularly uh, picky about He's not he picky, Josh is. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And uh, as he takes a knee next to the lock, we see him slide in a couple of tools and fiddle with it. Just as the lock clicks, the camera pulls from Sean and swoops back around the corner as Duke is about halfway over to the back when the guard nearest him swings around the corner with a pistol and a flashlight out. He's beaming the flashlight down and hits Duke directly. And the gun goes up. Hey, you need to step off this property now. You're going to get yourself killed. Uh, excuse me. I'm looking for a guard. There was a man running. He said he had a problem and he threw this down and I'll... Uh, expose a pistol, like holding an open hand. Oh, uh, you, just hold, you just hold the pistol and you're like looking for a guard? He, uh, like as it's, not, it's not clutch, it's just like laying yeah, no, flat just, in my hand. hand. He quickly makes very quick footsteps over to you and uh, looking to, to, to take the gun from your hand and he makes a sharp whistle. Max, Vera, and Sean can all hear the sharp whistle. Max, as you're turning the corner, the guard that you're supposed to take care of just turned his head to hear the whistle and looks like he's about to walk over that way. He gets Sean, a punch. I imagine he gets a punch in the face as he does. <laughs> yeah. Surprise. Surprise. Um, can I please get strength roll? This really does solve all problems. Mortals are easy, man. It's the Kindred game to worry about. <laughs> That's five successes. And then, and I guess I, I, sorry, I forgot to add the potent. So just Critted. I, oh my God, you messy critic. So as we, the camera, so the camera, uh, as, it, as it passes by the guard that does a sharp whistle, it actually catches the other guard's head turn as the, car, the guard actually starts walking to the camera. Before he even gets halfway, there's a sharp spatter of blood that hits the ground. You can hear it hit that spray. As the back of his head, the entire like cranial part, the crown part, just comes off as one punch comes in the back and he just crumples forward. Max stands over him with a bloody fist, bits of bone and brain mixed into his knuckles as a, you, the camera then slowly pans down to the body and you just see a giant hole in the back of his skull where Max's fist just collided with him. Oh, Duke, uh, po yeah. point, point of order. I was turning, like, as he turned his face, it went into oh, his face. So it actually went out through the back of his head, yeah. Yeah, the hole in the front. You went right through his nose, teeth scattered <laughs> everywhere. As as the fist came out, there were teeth and bits of skull stuck into your knuckles as you start plucking them out and an unrecognizable mass of meat sitting on top of the shoulders of that was once a man. Duke, he looks like he's aggressively moving forward toward you. <laughs> I will wait for him to collect the gun and uh, when he- He grabs the gun. Um, and then he shoves his pistol in your chest and says, turn around, start fucking walking. Guess who's getting mesmerized. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, let's get that rouse out there. Successful? Yes, successful. No hunger. You're going to remove that gun from my chest. In fact, you're going to place both of those back into my hand. And then you're going to wait here until I return. Completely silent. The gun leaves your chest, both his hands reach forward and place the guns in your hand. And then I walk away. I go to find my allies. 
as he stands there blankly waiting as you turn. As you walk back to the back alley where you are going, you actually see the mess of meat of a man on the ground with um, Max standing over him. Maxwell, that was a waste of a fine guard. Yeah, well, uh, I, I hit him a little harder than I intended. I suppose that there are always accidents on the scene. Do you want either of these pistols? They're just not my style. Yeah, I got. I'm. I'm pretty much kitted out. But yeah, might as well. You know, he'll take them and tuck them away. He shrugs like, "Hey, why not?" And, and takes them. And as the, as uh, we we watch Max reach forward and take both pistols, the camera then swoops past his shoulder and climbs the building, where we actually see Vera standing on top, looking into the wide windows that actually lean down into the actual warehouse, where you get a sky kind of overview of what's going on down there. Wits awareness, please. And what is uh, Vera's goal from the roof? Um, I'm going to I'm going to rouse for this to add an extra die because I want to know what the hell's going on down there. Okay, uh, success. Vera, as you look down into the windows of the warehouse, you can see some guards milling about. There's a whole first floor level that takes up the whole warehouse, but there's a small scaffolding that looks like it leads to a second floor office, maybe that's a little smaller. In there, you actually can see four figures in your pretty sure one of them is Tommy the Mouse. It's hard to see details from where you're at, though. It's an internal office, like it's on the interior. There's, it doesn't, um, can I access it from the exterior of the building? No, you would have to hop inside, go up the metallic stairs to the scaffolding and walk the path into a small metal, a what small- What is the roof office. of this, like the interior? Is it, is it open scaffolding warehouse? Yes, mm-hmm. Great. Uh, is there a window I can creak open and crawl You're inside like a little spider right on the, the ceiling? Yeah. Can I get a deck stealth check as you make your way over to a nearby window and start lifting it quietly? And then a wits awareness afterwards. So I got a two on the deck stealth and I'm your sorry, what was the second roll? Uh, wits awareness again as you're making your way down. Oh. Uh, the two again. Okay. You pry open the window that you were appearing into and you quietly kind of lift it as you slink your legs in first and slide in very flat until you quietly lower to find you hang from the nearby scaffolding you can perch up quietly as you look around the camera actually flies to the down to the first floor from you down there to the back door to the front door where you actually can see a little moonlight Vera catches a little moonlight as the door cracks open you see a familiar figure slink his way inside or quietly shutting the door behind him the camera catches up with Sean Sean, you're met with boxes, high of crates, cardboard, and various other ones. Some openly drugs. You actually see a ton of weed just stacked in the corner to your right-hand side. Pounds and pounds and pounds of it. Can I get a wits awareness from you first, though? That is one. Okay. But I should mention that Sean's being very careful once he's inside, and he is... Uh using his obfuscate power okay. cloak of shadow fantastic so you too go uh that's the um that's the first in, level one yeah the stand yeah. in place and not be seen so as you uh vera as you watch sean kind of step in and close the door behind him he takes us you see him step off to the left hand side positioning himself between a nearby crate and the wall and as just as quickly as he stands there you blink and suddenly he's gone completely lost sight even looking around he is gone sean what is it you want to do now that you're standing here? He is going to see if he can find any signs of uh, transport. And, well, I mean, he's found the drugs. He's just you gotta like... find the ones you're looking for. Yeah, well, for I sure. mean, he could take them all. But, yeah, he's going to see, uh, see if he f sees any, like, stamps on boxes, anything he recognizes. Um, remind me, uh, what is it you sold the Russians in season one? Was it cocaine? It's cocaine. Yeah. So you're looking for cocaine. Maybe a new arrival or shipment of cocaine in the area. That's mm. what you're looking for. So can I get an intelligence investigation check? Uh, you're looking for uh, signs of recent transport, something new in the area, etc. Mm. You have something else you'd like to roll instead? Then you can give me an <laughs> Something I've got more dice in. But no. <laughs> yeah, I know. I figure. Uh, Sean is not the investigating type, but he got two successes on two dice. So he's hey, yeah, that himself. is two successes. They eh? fantastic. You actually see 
um, what looks like skid marks, tr like not like uh, tire tr mm. uh, skid marks, not, not not underwear skid marks, tire skid marks. Um, that that lead <laughs> <laughs> that lead around the corner of the stack of crates that you're actually standing and uh, cloaked in right now. It's the only um, marks on the con on the ground that uh, that are actually present. It looks it looks like the only ones you would expect um, there to be plenty. So Tommy probably keeps a clean house, and those are likely recent. You would have to move from your spot though to follow them. Okay, he's gonna he's gonna wait a couple of uh, minutes and then kind of find a way around that doesn't like take him down the main corridor or in between like well lit places. Stealth, yeah. a deck stealth check then, please. Yeah. Um, I'm actually gonna roll because there's one guard within earshot here. As uh, Vera, you watch as um, as you kind of the camera flies back up to Vera's shoulder, and as uh, kind of lost sight of him and thought, okay, maybe he's gone. You actually see him kind of ripple back in existence. You see him take a step, and he peers around the corner and he's looking around. And then he looks over at the crate, and there's an area about one crate high that he could probably fit his body in that would allow him to avoid the lights of the main road. And you see him thinking about it for a minute. And then you see him give himself a rather like like a head nod, like, okay, this is gonna work. And you see him pull himself up and very tightly squeeze himself between two crates. You actually lose sight of him. And for a while, you think he might actually, Matt actually could uh, actually did it before you, uh, after maybe 10, 15 seconds, you hear a large clatter and a, what was that? Followed by a, oh shit. Sean, as the camera flies back down to you, you actually knocked over a two by four nearby that was loose by your foot. And as you're as 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 you're pulling your way out, and as it clattered onto the ground, the guard didn't see your body swing out, but the guard nearby actually that saw it walked right over to uh, walked right by you over to the two by four, and is now standing dead in front of you. If he turns even a little to his left, he's gonna see you, but he's not an eyesight of Vera, and Vera can't see this. Ooh. If you start making your way back, you will need to make another stealth a deck stealth roll or you can try and do something else from here. You can wait and see what happens. Sean's gonna stay stock still and trust that his uh, his new obfuscate power works as he, he stops moving. Does it kick back on to... once you move again? Does it kind of kick back on? Is it like a scene thing? Uh, yeah, it's, it's the level one. So it okay, cool. just... So you just... So you I stand moving. perfectly still and I blend in, into my surroundings. Okay, so you do it again and you immediately stand still and hope that he doesn't poke or try to move in because the only way he could see you is if he decides he needs to move in there and walk through. Um, and uh, for a moment he looks over and then looks down at uh, like where it would have come from over by your feet and he flashes a flashlight in there and looks around and then clicks the flashlight off and picks up the two by four before uh, tossing it on top of the, the crates that you're standing between and marches off. Sean looks a lot more tense now. <laughs> <laughs> Vera, what do you do now that you're in the scaffolding? Yeah, I want to get across to the to where the office is. Okay, Max and, um, Max and Duke, what are you guys doing? Did you want to head inside or are you waiting on the outside for them? Uh, I think Max could head inside because uh, he can. Max can head inside uh, pretty safely. Mm -hmm. uh, he will Duke stash. Is... We will, uh, you know, drag the body off to the side so it's not just a a big bloody corpse in the uh, in the pool yeah, yeah. of light. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Duke will likely uh, look to the vehicles to see if uh, how many vehicles are here and if he can try to get in and grab some keys. Yep, you see two vehicles here: one um, small black, like uh, just regular automobile, and an SUV. Greater. I'm assuming they're unlocked. Uh, you oh, you head over to see if they're unlocked. They're yeah. Not. No, no, they're not unlocked. Okay. Can I get inside? Uh, you would have to make a Dex Larceny check, or you could bust the window. Let's try the Dex Larceny. Sounds good. I've got two, two successes. Two successes is enough to pop any normal common door, uh, common lock for a car door, SUV door. And after a few seconds, eventually, you hear the door pop, and you're actually like, uh, able to pop it open. Oh hi. It's me, Vera. While you're taking a break, take a moment to visit DieHardDice.com. Die Hard Dice is a sponsor of this little podcast. They make what we do possible. During checkout, make sure to use the code STITCH-FEB. 
B, and you'll get 10% off your entire purchase. And we get a little cut for our own resources. Hmm. Sounds like we only roll with the best. Okay. Um, I'll look around for any keys, uh, see if there's any any kind of spare above the visor. I'll even check, like, the inner will well. Give me a wits investigate, please. Yeah. That's much better for me. Uh, Is Duke's specialty? Max, yes? I assume the... Now, the door to the warehouse is open, right? Like, it's not... The front open. door is. The back door is locked. You could just go to the front door and walk in the front door. That's where, like that door, that's where Sean went. So yeah. you go invisible again, and you kind of march off as Duke looks like he's prepping for a way out of here and ahead in the front door. Uh, you're greeted with the same sights I've described to both Sean and to Vera. Vera, can I get a dex athletics for you as you march across the, star, the scaffold, then followed by a dex stealth to see how quietly... Would you consider my aerial skills beneficial in this? Yes, I absolutely. Do, in this particular situation. My specialty, okay. Duke, hey, as you, hey. as you, as you, with three successes, Duke, as you climb and plow through the car, flipping open every little thing and looking where the, all the common places for a spare key would be, you end up coming up short. It isn't until um, that you uh, pull out a small uh, manila folder with just papers in it uh, from the uh, glove box that an actual key from between the, the uh, papers slides out and lands on the passenger seat that would match this SUV. That's great. What about this manila envelope? What What is this? It just looks like a bunch of numbers to you right out the gate. If you were to guess, could be budget, could be... Uh, it would, it, you would need a few minutes to look it over. Does Duke get comfortable in the car? I will take it. You're just gonna um, take it for now, got it. No I'm, I'm gonna take it for now. Um, I'll probably wait a few minutes if there's no action. I will likely uh, try to set off some sort of an alarm if I can. No problem. Back into the warehouse as we see Max enter. Um, Sean, uh, we'll go back to, we'll go actually go to Vera for a minute because you just rolled, uh, how many successes total? Uh, Is that, a that crawl was a six critical success. Six critical success. As the camera peers upward to Vera, we watch as it truly does look like um, a gymnast performance as she climbs through the scaffold thing, legs in the air, sometimes standing on her hands. Uh, Sean even, uh, can I get a wits awareness from Max and Sean? Just to see if they catch this from up top. Uh, but a deck stealth check from Vera as she is making her way over there quietly. I'm just curious if they would be able to catch her. She's in, her, in an element she hasn't been in in quite some time. Four successes. With a crit. Sean. Oh, you crit? Damn. Uh, you only got one ten. Oh, one ten. Vera, would you like to read? Vera only got the one. Um, it's not very. You know what? I don't care if it's quiet. They're down there. Again, sure. Vera is now in her element. She has a plan, and she needs to get to Tommy Back and his to Sean, boss. You can hear the tink, the slight tinking of what it sounds like somebody, like a mouse or something, up on the scaffold thing. Only something your kindred ears would pick up. And as you look up, you can see her. As I said. Just elegantly, um, like a gymnast performance, moving through the scaffolding, sliding through small holes, and do like I said, doing handstands and small crawls until she makes her way over to the top or right above that office, and she looks down. You can see four people down here, presumably the underboss and two people standing behind him, and on the other side of the desk, it looks like Tommy the Mouse. Tommy is smiling widely as he in during conversations. It's uh, unfortunate that no one can see Max because when he spots Vera doing that, he holds up a little card that says 10 on it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she knows. Deep down, deep down, she knows. Uh, oh, God. The door, is there a door to this office that is closed? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's closed. It's, it's on the, uh, the little ramp that you'd have to... Can just Vera look. just, like, drop and flutter down to right in front of the door? She she's going to land? Yeah, she's just going to land and knock. I oh, I've got, a, I've got a huge plan. This guy, they're so fucking screwed. You are not <laughs> fully ready for this because, of course, you aren't. Well, I'm never in, but... Vera elegantly drops. Dex Athletics, please. Max and Sean all see this, of course. Uh, and, of course, uh, Max is, is working his way towards where Vera is going because he can move. Making her way up. So you, there's a stairwell. You simply climb up, and it's up to a, like I said, just a kind of a platform that stretches maybe 50 feet to the door in a small office. Um, you watch as you're making your way up, and Sean, as you pop out and you're looking for the tracks, you actually see the tire tracks lead to a mound of un, uh, not in crates yet, uh, but in plastic bricks, cocaine, just stacked up against the wall. He prays. <laughs> Vera, <laughs> you knock, knock, knock. Yeah. All I, the chatter I, I inside. I was about to say, I drop the trench coat. Like, yep. she just drops it to the floor, and she turns on awe. Okay. You drop... <laughs> You drop the trench coat 
Max, you make your way and finish uh, making your way up the stairs. When that happens, you see the drench coat just elegantly fall to the ground and crumple in a small pile. She knocks three times. The ed chatter on the other side completely stops. There's a, uh, uh, what well, sounds like a grunt or something before um, the door does actually open. And one of the guards uh, of the underboss is standing there with a, with a rifle pointed directly at you. You have awe on. What do you do? Okay. Because awe, yeah. She goes, what do you say? Oh, I'm sorry. Was I interrupting a meeting? I was here to see Tommy. Tommy, um, uh, well, uh, okay. Uh, the guard kind of just looks to you with, a, uh, with his gun pointed at you, but as you speak your words and he takes in your figure from top to bottom, um, the gun doesn't fully point off of you, but it goes a little limp as it points a little down, his guard clearly dropping a bit. He looks over his shoulder as Tommy and the, uh, the underboss now facing this way, and you can actually see he's got a very, very clean, clean, tight beard and a very, very short, gelled, slicked back hair. He's got dark brown eyes, and he looks like he is built like a truck. Wits awareness. Tommy looks over past you and uh, passes the guard, catches eyes with you. And Max, you're watching all of this, of course. Uh, and we got a one. There's a look of stun, like there's a stunned look on his face, and he simply lets us out the words, the fuck is this bitch doing here? And he um look and he look quickly looks like he's about to reach under his table to uh She goes grab. she she tosses her hands up. Wait, everyone, please. I just want to talk. And I'm actually going to try to persuade them. I'm I want to persuade them to like not. Tommy to at least Tommy. Give me a uh give me a manipulation persuasion. Would you say that Vera's extraordinary good looks would help her in such a situation? Because she has four in stunning, which adds two die. With Tommy, yes. Okay. Okay. Manipulation, persuasion, and I've got awe on, which I believe adds my two. Oh, this is a massive dice pool. That would be a seven. <laughs> is that critical? Is that a critical? It is not a crit. It is not. Oh, Only wow. one ten, but it is just a flat seven. And what is the words that come out of your mouth? And she goes, I just want to talk. Uh, there, he, as he goes to reach, he actually freezes for a moment and stops and stands up and he's like, I don't know if I trust it. I know what happened last time we talked. And then he looks up at the underboss. It's at this point, the underboss actually just looks over his shoulder. He looks to you and he smiles and he looks to Tommy. Hey, Tommy, get your boys, go home. We did a good job tonight. <laughs> and then he turns back to you. Tommy doesn't say a word. He listens pats his guards on the shoulder and motions him to leave through the front door. What does Vera do? She like moves to the side just enough that they have to like squeeze past Thank her uh, on the, by the door so that the they two- They have to go by Max as well. So I'm curious if Max would let them go yeah. by him. Vera you knows don't know Max, Max I was about to say, but Vera knows Max is always there. He's always nearby. So <laughs> she just closes, once she's alone with this guy, she just closes the door. Max is, Max's office. job was to get Tommy. He's going to get okay. Tommy. So, yeah. That's... So, you're going to follow Tommy out the back door. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sean, you as you're looking through this, um, you're seeing stamps of an eagle, uh, things that represent the, the Russian mob. Uh, yeah. Okay. He, uh, like, double checks that he's uh, alone, and then... Um... As you double check, you actually can see Tommy and a couple of guards making his way downstairs. And he does a sharp whistle and says, boys, out back, we're out of here. Oh, okay then. He uh, <laughs> starts moving the moving the crates to, is there like a, a truck in here or something? Not in here, but out back there's an SUV. Ah, easy. Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna- You're gonna make your uh, way out start back. Start preparing them to, to, yep. Okay. Doing That's his job. Vera, uh, Max, you're gonna follow Tommy outside. They're all gonna go out the back door. Duke, you're gonna see the back door open, but we're gonna get to that in a minute. Vera, you close yourself into the office with this man. You don't recognize him. You've not really dealt with the mob all that much, or at least nobody higher than a capo. Dealing with underbosses and higher is not really worth the stress or the effort, nor do you really need that kind of money in the first place. But he stands before you, a good six five, and he just looks down at you, and he gives you a grin. What do you think you're doing here? Unless you're just looking to clean yourself up for me. <laughs> That's funny, actually. Let me guess. Uh, based on your um, overcompensation, I'd say you're Tommy's boss? Yeah, yeah, Tommy's boss. Oh. I would like to uh, 
cordially speak with you, if you don't mind. He actually steps to the side and gestures for Tommy's seat behind the desk for you to take it. She's out. Thank you. I prefer to sit here. And she, like, sits on the desk, yep. like, one leg up and, like, puts her whole body on the desk. And she says, I offered Tommy something once. Maybe he was not the man for the job. What did you offer Tommy? I asked Tommy if he wanted to dance with me. Would you like a dance? Mm. How many? How many of you are here? I'm not exactly sure what you mean. If you mean by one of a kind gal, well, there's only one of those around. Dex, Dex athletics check as he takes a swing at you without you seeing it come. Um, I have a lot of celerity powers, including fleetness. Go ahead. Oh, that was just such a bad roll. I'm willpowering to reroll that. Okay. That was so bad. I can reroll what, all three? I only got one success. You take two, so you're gonna take three superficial damage. As this guy moves faster than you expected him to, his hand is a blur as it collides with the shoulder and you can actually feel your shoulder and, and uh, uh, your shoulder bones crack as his fist fully goes through, collides with the metallic desk and leaves a gigantic dent in it as he pulls it back. As you look down at the dent and look back to him, you watch as his clothes begin to rip a little bit. He cracks his neck and he bares his mouth as his teeth start getting, uh, falling out and being replaced. Shit. Can yeah. I make a dive for his neck? Say for a it. nice lingering kiss? Oh, you want to bite and drink? Oh, oh shit. shit, you're right. You're totally right. Oh, this is going to be a hot disaster. I'm here for it. I'm so here for it. Okay, no, I want to linger and kiss the shit out of this guy. I've got a plan. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Wait, no, I don't have to drink to linger and kiss him. Or not during feeding. Feeding, though, yeah, it's during feeding. Yeah. So you would have to feed, so I don't know if that's something you want to do. I'm gonna you only know, feed, oh god, this sucks. Your werewolves are bad, bad. Like, you're, you're Vera, right? And Vera's been around for a while. You've run into a werewolf here and there. I have? And of course. You don't want to fuck with them. You don't want to fuck with the werewolf. And, and I would know. I would know immediately. That's what he is. Oh, as soon as he starts changing in front of you, uh, you would know that you're dealing with a lupine. You don't know if he's like one of the ones that's like protecting Mother Earth or one of the ones that's being selfish. There's different kinds out there. But he starts changing in front of you. Does he have to now let me go to change? No, he's just he's just transforming into his cr a Krenos form in okay, front of you. Hang on. Yeah, yeah but you said he had his hand. Like he hit me, but he didn't grab me. He didn't grab. Oh me. no, he didn't grab you. He just cracked you in the shoulder looking to like do damage as he was mid transformation. Okay. If you're looking to run, you like any Dex athletics check to slide between his legs, that kind of thing. <gasps> yeah, okay, okay. Max, you know Max has Tommy and is in pursuit of Tommy. The and you know and Sean has found the drugs. Um okay. Uh yeah, Vera is going to um she can escape out of one of these windows. She could take the fall or at least catch herself on something. Like, um, mm -hmm. She smiles, a grinny smile. She said, ooh, tricky Italians. You've been <laughs> hiding something. And she's going to like ping off a wall and out the window. Uh, yeah, that's a funny check as he's gonna make a swing for you. Max, you follow him on as in the outside. And basically he doesn't start fighting until um, Tommy and his men go out the door. So it's I don't hear this. Out. You wouldn't hear that until the first probably like roar, which hasn't happened yet. Um, you follow outside. Duke, you see them marching outside. Um, Tommy is surrounded by, it's Tommy plus four. Four guards, two inside plus the two under boss's guards. Five total on the outside. The and door, I, don't, I don't see uh, Max or Vera. Oh, mm -mm. The door flies open and you just see two guards march out followed by Tommy, followed by two more guards before the last guard turns and swings the door shut. Max would have snuck out with that last guard. Okay, and I can't see him whatsoever. If I'm gonna see, if like they're just casually walking, they're walking towards the vehicles. All right. Um, I, I shouldn't be casually walking. Uh, there's severe amounts of improvisation here. So, uh, key into yeah. into the ignition. Yep. We throw it into reverse and then pull it right back. Yep. Okay. Can I get a um? Can I get a Dex driving check from you? Sure. As they're gonna get, um, I'm gonna give them a group Dex athletics check, basically, and. Uh, we're probably gonna hit a few of them. I roused to uh to increase my pool. 
I will willpower. You roll one of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is just reverse. It's not yeah, like I'm it's reverse. Yeah, you're not doing some insane antics. I got one success. You got a success. So as the car immediately, the engine uh, start turning on caught their attention. And as it starts speeding backwards, you see most of them get out of the way. But the last one who was actually shutting the door and catching up, as he turns around, he doesn't realize what's happening until it's too late. And the back of the car, you just have a heavy thud as it goes ba bump ba bump over one of the bodies. The other, all four of the other ones start pulling their weapons and start aiming for the gun and unloading. Max, what do you do? Uh, we'll go into combat now for these three. Max, what are you going to do? So I'm at the back with the... Uh, yep. So is it possible that I could basically take the two guards at the back and smash their heads together? They all dived in the same direction. You easily could have go over there and grab two of them and just kind of come out of invisibility as you're like, Shh, bam, and mash their heads together. That's what I'm doing, and I'm using potency. They get a strength brawl, but it's going to be, um, you, can, you have to separate the pool. Um, how many dice do you want to use against one guard versus how many dice do you want to use in, against another? Hmm. Uh, well, I'll split it down the middle because I'm, I'm looking okay. at, like, a ten dice pool, so five on five. Okay, five and five from each one. You're uh, they're going against one uh, one defense because you're invisible and they aren't aware that you're there. They're too worried and focused on the car that tried to run them all over. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the best way to do that? Just roll five d tens. Just roll me. Separately? Yeah, just roll me two five d tens separately. That's fine. Uh, how many hunger? How much hunger are you at? I'm at two hunger. Okay, I'll you, I'll include the last two of any die pool of your hunger die. All right, so you rolled two successes for the first one. And three successes for the second one. Um, as, as you do so, coming up behind them, you'll knock one of them out while the other one is on the ground, kind of like, oh, kind of moaning as he reaches for his head. Oh, and yeah. uh, also, uh, I've got lethal body, so that's all aggravated damage to mortals, I believe. Oh, god damn. All right, well, they... Uh... <laughs> You, you break one of their necks as you collide them too hard. The other one goes unconscious, but his breathing is shallow, and you're not sure if he has a concussion or not. But it's not really your business. They both fall on the ground unconscious. Okay. That leaves Tommy and one other guard. Duke, you're still in the car. They're going to get their role to attack you. To, they're shooting, kind of just emptying their clips at you. What is Duke doing? I'm just going to lean over in the vehicle. You're just going to take cover? Yeah, I'm just going to lean over. Okay. Um, you're going to roll me a dex uh, athletics check, but you're going to get a plus uh, two on top of it for cover. Okay. And they're going to get just kind of a open fire in two separate rolls. Two successes. Two successes. Uh, one, two, one, two uh, versus both those attacks. Um, you're going to have bullets kind of hitting you, but you're not going to take any damage. Not enough to take any superficial damage as a car is riddled uh i am gonna take a roll real quick to see if they hit the gas tank and gas starts leaking on their kind of spastic attack i'm just gonna roll a d10 odds evens it okay well the gas tank does not get popped that's a plus good yep uh duke you just take cover um it goes back to the top of the round max there's the two left there's tommy and the guard duke are you gonna stay down and let max kind of finish it out um well i've heard two of them firing i yep. know that there were four there and i took one out Yep. I will continue gathering everything that I can that I pulled out, just like stuffing it into my into my clothes, and then I'll wait. Okay, no problem. Um, so we'll do. Uh, we're gonna cut the camera back for a moment as those last gunshots and riddle the car. The camera actually slides past the wall and sees the other side of the door, wearing a couple of his uh, bundled in his arms. He's got a couple of bricks of cocaine. Sean, you hear the sudden gunfire on the other side, but as you look up and you actually can see because you heard the clanging of the punch on the metal desk. You actually can see what looks like an enormously large man um, blocking the vision of any door and window up there, and you hear a, you heard a large clang. What does Sean do? He's got gunshots on one side and Vera above him. His instinct is to take the drugs and run. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that. You could easily do that. Yeah, I I think front door. You his... go to the other door. I, uh, you know what, he's gonna he's gonna peek out the 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 door where he knows Duke will be. That's the back door, right? Yep. Yeah, he's gonna oh, he's yeah. gonna peek through there and see what carnage is going so, on. Sean kind of creaks open the metal door, and that's when you actually catch uh, as as um as Max ripples into existence, and you see him collide the two guards' heads together and crumple to the ground. You see Tommy and one guard unloading into a backing up truck, but you can't see who's driving it. You imagine it's Duke, however. Okay, yeah, he's gonna go outside and sneak around to somewhere he can get picked up by Duke. <laughs> okay, 
<laughs> Can I get a, del- a, stealth, uh, stealth dex, a dex stealth check as you walk away from these guards? They're very occupied. I'm looking just for you to beat a one here. It's very easy. Uh, fortunately. <laughs> Come on, man. Just a one success is all I need from you. <laughs> oh, oh, no! oh, no. I've got more dice than that. Yeah, I was about to say, that was not the right dice pool. That's not the right dice pool. That's zero uh, dice. You rolled zero dice and got zero successes. <laughs> Okay. okay. Oh, you got the one success. Um, <laughs> as you kind of hurry off, something. there's actually the the goon actually does catch you for a minute. He clearly makes a quick judgment call and ignores you and goes back to shooting at the very clear and present threat instead of some kid who's maybe being a little opportunistic during a gunfight. Uh, and off you scurry down to down the street, probably a block away, where you can wait for the chaos to end. We hard cut back into the warehouse. What are you looking to do here, Vera? Vera dives like Scott Pilgrim's out the window. Just dives for it. Yeah, I'll go. Uh, I haven't seen anybody else. Vera needs a quick out. This isn't about looking pretty hey, anymore. She type, yeah, yeah, dives. Next athletics, we do not care. We do not care. Yeah, I just gotta, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. Uh, a three. It takes a round to transfer, uh, to, to transform. In his transformation is when, as Vera dives out the window, we can hear the window crash as the glass scatters outward and falls a floor down, landing with Vera on the concrete ground of the first floor as you roll forward and then begin to sprint for the back door. As you reach for the handle of the back door behind you, you can hear the enormously loud howl that is both somehow uh, animalistic and supernatural mixed together, echoing and ripping through the sky. Max, Sean, Duke, you all hear this. You all know what this noise is, with the exception of Sean. Sean does, would not recognize it. Sean, that mm-hmm. was a weird noise. That's a fucking scary as hell noise. But Max and Duke, as, uh, as Duke maybe comes up behind uh, Tommy and the guard, Tommy and the guard both actually stop firing completely at the truck, dead turn to uh, the building and look in, in absolute stun. Um, as... Uh... What, as yep, Ma- as Max ahead. registers this, you just hear, "Ah, oh, crap!" Vera comes busting out a window and goes, "Quickly, grab Tommy, leave the rest of them." <laughs> the, the the back door flies open and it clangs with the back as Vera bursts through. Uh, Max, do you just make a grab for Tommy? Mm-hmm. Okay, strength brawl. Strength brawl. Duke, are you just gonna drive the car and get out as uh, you see Vera? Vera, are you gonna go into the car? Um. Yes. Uh, okay. Are all the guards dead? All but Tommy and his one guard. Okay, they're, the one guard are... that's the oh, the one guard that's left. Vera walks past. She does not have time for this. She is in a full sprint, and she is going to just slice his throat open with her finger. And yep. that's on the way by. So you're just running by and sick, sick, sick to make sure nobody, you know. No I want message. them all dead. I want them all dead and left. I have a plan. Yep. And and then the, the door, the back door opens to the SUV. Duke as she swings in, slides in legs first, and lays really low and prone, and probably just hits the chair and goes, "Go, go, go, Duke." Yeah. You begin to drive out of here as yes. fast as possibly can. Wait, yes. is Max so in the car? Uh, Max is soon going invisible and heading into the sewers with the body of Tommy. Unless you want Max in the car with you too, that's fine. No, well, we would wait on Max. We're all getting out of here with Tommy. Okay, Max would slide his way into the car with a critical hit, uh, a messy critical on Tommy. You're going to bleed him up a little bit, but you didn't do enough damage to kill him uh, with that low roll. Um, he's going to immediately fall unconscious in your hands with blood coming out of his nose. The other guard doesn't really respond to what's happening, and you don't take this opportunity to end his life. Oh, uh, unless you do. Yeah, you want him dead? I mean, so, Vera's already killed. Max, or, will yeah. his neck. Max will snap his neck while he's dumbfounded by the noise. And as you're climbing into the car, Max, and, and the car is starting to roll out, you can see um, behind you, uh, Vera, as you look behind, the glass that you came out of, from, uh, came, went in from the window, you see it shatter as this enormous silhouette kind of just jumps up and lands on the roof. The roof actually dents a little bit, and it's another enormous howl as um, Duke quickly peels out around the corner and starts driving. A few blocks out, you actually can see Sean jogging with stuff in his hands, looking back a couple of times. Pick him up. <laughs> Sean, the SUV peels up next to you. The, the side door flies open and they usher you in as you kind of spill the cocaine in and climb in behind. And with that, the SUV rips out. On down our, the I was about to say, on our way down the road, Vera looks at Duke and she says, you have that police friend, the detective, yes? Yes, I do. Maybe it's worthwhile to let him know that... You got a heads up. The Italians have some internal fighting at a warehouse full of drugs. Hmm? I think that shouldn't be a problem for me to release to Luther. Thank you. Let's cause as much problem for them as possible. You just hid 
Sean in the back just clapping like, what the hell was that? I imagine Vera's <laughs> taking some serious damage. I The black vinyl's oh, yeah. like ripped open. She's bleeding out on her shoulder where he like punched her. Um, and the car speeds off regardless. All of you catching your breath, Sean a little dumbfounded and excited, but eventually you return back to your club, Tommy over the shoulder of Max and the leaving that beast behind you. It didn't seem to pursue you and you count your lucky stars that it didn't. Towards the back of the club, you make your way and down the stairs toward the blood room where you quickly plop Tommy on the concrete floor and the camera spins around the coterie. It's at this moment, the camera picks something out in the back. Over by the bench where Duke usually sits and does his numbers, there's a blurry figure slightly out of focus. The coterie comes together for a moment, now finally having a time to, to communicate after that job. And that's where the camera focuses for now. Is there, is there anything that needs to be said between the coterie about this job? Or Vera do you kind of simply leave says, off? Tommy felt like he was too good for my dance, yes? And wants to cause us all these problems. Max, take him to my haven. Chain him to the wall. I'll make good use of him for a few weeks. You got it, Vera. Uh... Ain't anybody gonna mention the elephant, or should I say, the large lupine form in the room? With that, I um, I want to glance over this, the like the the tearing in the in the vinyl, uh, to make sure that she's not been bled. No, she's. It was superficial damage that was done, um, because he wasn't in transform. He wasn't fully transformed at the time. So all those superficial wounds can be. It's not enough to gouge and has bleeding. Any superficial cuts have been healed. I just wanted to make sure that you haven't been <clears throat> found through scent. I don't think so. I don't think he was planning on seeing us at all. He surprised me as much as I did him. He asked how many more there were. I told him none. Yeah, but uh, call me a pessimist, but I think uh, Lon Chaney Jr. there is going to be a real problem in the future. I get that reference. Yes, I think the Wolfman will be a problem. Possibly. Wait, 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 that was a Wolfman? Yes, Sean, a Lupine. Oh, cool. Did you not, get any blood? Not cool. Sean, not cool at all. I disagree. They're a hazard to our health far more so than you probably realize. They're infinitely more lethal than any kindred in this room at this point, and if they stumbled upon us, I have no doubt that even a single and full Krenos form could eradicate us. They have a particular distaste for our kind. Uh, nah, we'd be pretty tight friends. Yes, okay, Sean. Dad. Okay, you... you keep telling yourself that. All right, you piece of shit, let's go. Come on, Tommy. Hoisted over the shoulders, Max marches his way out of the room, shortly perhaps followed by Duke. I think Duke would probably stay and with this new newfound nervous energy that he's managed to pick up a vehicle of uh, likely a lupine, he wants to go over this information and then dispose of the vehicle. Okay. So we'll see uh, you starting to file through some papers and walking to the back of, uh, of the camera shot, slightly out of focus. Vera, where would you end up going? I think Vera stays. She's always last out of the room. She mm -hmm. waits for everybody else to exit if they do, but she's... Leaning on the wall, staring off in deep thought, uh, kind of often into the corner. Sean Stein. Okay. As everybody takes their spots, Max leaves, and the camera settles into the corner of the room. This uneasy quiet settles. We see as Vera leans up against the wall, taking things in, repeating, or perhaps replaying the mission in her mind and just thinking about where they're at now. Sean, giddy, not, not necessarily confused, but excited. Information hungry, perhaps, about these lupines, wants to know more. We see him even pacing back and forth, talking to himself. But the last we see is Duke, walking over to his table. The figure that was lying on that bench comes into focus as Duke gently lifts the head of this figure and sits next to it. She pushes it down as the head lies down, and as we, the camera focuses in on his hands and we watch as he gently cradles the head of this particular figure down, it's then that the audience sees that it is Prince Panhard lying on the bench of the basement in the blood room of Vera's club. Her eyes stare blankly above, and the wounds that we last saw her with have mostly disappeared, though still a slight vitae trickles from her forehead. 
down the left side of her temple and pooling underneath her every so often. And as we watch that familiar face staring blankly at the camera, it will slowly fade to black and we will return next week with more answers and more questions. Hey, it's Sean. Now I'm sure you've heard Vera say no phones, but if we're gonna break a billion followers, then I'm gonna need you to do me a little favor. If you could hop onto Twitter and follow us at Pod by Night, that would be mint, and a five-star review on iTunes ain't gonna hurt either. And maybe I'll share some of them spicy DMs with you. Cheers, mate. <laughs>